Good morning, church. <clears throat> good to be together today. Worship God and to share a lot of good news with each other. We have a baby shower this afternoon at four. That'll be great. Uh, I believe uh, Logan was born this morning. That's wonderful. Uh, Jacoby, you were leading singing, right? Next week you'll be getting married. <laughs> Selena, we're so happy for the two of you. A lot of good news, a lot of things to talk about. But what we want to talk about today is how to be moved from being ashamed to being unashamed as Christians. In other words, how to transform ourselves. I believe if we can do this, if we can transform ourselves from being shamed to unashamed by the gospel, we will literally change our world. There were some really nice articles written this week, and two of the articles mentioned about inviting people, about how just one man changed the northern Kentucky area. And so I know that we can do it. But, unfortunately, we can't talk about two things at the same time. We can't talk about all the good news that we talked about already today and about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to think about what our talking point is. For instance... There has been a lot of talk this week about something that came out of Washington. And just about every single governor came out and spoke against it. One from Texas really came about it strongly. Now we can either talk about the politics that's going on around us, especially when it's so close to where we are today in the Bible. We are at Romans chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. Well, from verse 26 onwards, it starts to talk about this topic. Or we can realize that we need to be about talking about the gospel. You see, the gospel will change the world. There was a time in the Church of Christ that uh, we had different opinions on things. I remember when Garfield was becoming president. He came out of the Civil War. He was a general and he, he was a tremendous commander. And then he be started to become president. At the same time, David Lipskin was running uh, for, uh, well not running, he's been a, a tremendous gospel preacher. And, and we have the David Lipscomb University today as a result. Well, David Lipscomb and James Garfield didn't sit around the same fire. Uh, when he was becoming president, Garfield was becoming president, Lipskin wrote so many letters saying he shouldn't be president. And, and, you know, and he, re he had his reasons why, and he, he articulated them very well. But you see, what they could have rather done, what both of them could have rather have done, is just spoken about the gospel. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God to salvation, to all who believe, to the Jews first, and also to the Greeks. And that's what we need. So if you'll turn to your back page right now and look at the outline and open your Bibles to Romans 1.16, you'll see there are three things that we are looking for in order to change our world. We are looking for Christians who are eager to preach the gospel. <laughs> We're looking for Christians who are not ashamed of the gospel. And we are looking for Christians who will share the gospel, who will share it. As it is, from faith to faith, or from faith for faith, or faith of faith. There's a lot of ways to translate that preposition. But that's what we're looking for. Now, if we can find a Christian, or two, or maybe a whole congregation that this morning can transform to make their number one speaking point the gospel, I have absolutely no doubt we will change our world. Let's start with the first one. Let's start with verse 15 and see what we need to be eager to preach. He says, so I am eager. What has he been speaking about? He's been speaking about the fact that he wants to come to Rome. He's been prevented to come to Rome. There, an apostle of Jesus Christ has not yet come to Rome to lay hands so that the gifts may be spread throughout this wonderful congregation. And he says that he has been made a messenger to the barbarians and to the Jews, specifically to the barbarians or speaking to the Gentiles. And he says, therefore, or so, I want to come to Rome. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. So I am keen. I am very eager. What are you eager to speak about? Well, are you eager to speak about your favorite uh, 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 team, whether it's a football team or a baseball team? Are you eager to speak about that? How eager are you? 
Are you eager to, to find a cure or to talk about a cure? Let's say, for instance, one of your family members was killed by a terrible disease. And maybe it's affecting some other of your family members. And you happen to find the cure. You come across the doctor that has the cure for this illness. Would you pick up the phone and call your family member and say to them, I've spoken to this doctor. He, he said he's ready to make an appointment for you. And he has the cure. Would you be eager? Yes, you would, right? You'd be eager. So I know we have people who are very keen in this congregation. Are you eager to talk about political issues? I can almost guarantee you that in about 80% of all pulpits in the church today, they're talking about that second slide that I had up there. What a tremendous wasted opportunity. They could have been talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, Paul could talk about so many things. I believe Paul would have had nieces and nephews. He might even have had children. I never read about his nieces and nephews. I never read about this child has been born or, or this is happening or this one's gone to college. And, and congratulations, by the way, to all of you who are graduating. There's so many things we could be talking about, right? But Paul says, I'm eager, I'm keen to talk to you about one thing. Now, the gospel is the word yongaleon. Yongaleon is a noun. When euangelion is a verb, euangelizo, it means to communicate it. So what is, and this is one word, I preach the gospel is one word. I preach the gospel. I'm actively putting the gospel into verb form. So some people say, you see it says preach, that's what preachers do. I've got nothing to do with that. In other words, you've got nothing to do with the gospel? Surely you won't say that, right? You have need all of us need to be eager to communicate the gospel. The other thing that I might find amazing, that he knows what he's going to communicate, and he's eager about it. I find it amazing that he knows his audience. To those of you who are in Rome, these are people who really needed it. They had a lot of it, but they did not have the complete teaching. And so Paul was going to come there, he was going to lay hands on them, they would have the prophecy, they would have tongues, they would have knowledge, and they would have the rest of the gospel that you and I have in our hands today. They would only get it through those three gifts. They would get it because Paul could come there and give it to them. And so he, he knew about his audience, he knew what he was going to do, and he was determined. Are you keen to talk to, you, to, talk to a certain group of people? Who are you going to talk to? See, you've got, to, you've got to say, anybody that God brings into my path, this is who I'm going to talk to. How many of you have been close to dying in your life? Maybe you haven't been close to dying. Maybe you, you've witnessed a car wrap itself around a lamppost. I've never been in a car that's been wrapped around a lamppost, but I imagine it would be a horrible thing. But I have been close to many instances that I almost died, and I believe many of you can say the same. Every single time, I've made a commitment to realize that there is so little time. And that it is so important that when I get to talk to people, I shouldn't be talking to them about the weather. I could talk about the weather today, couldn't we? But I shouldn't do that. I've got one, one opportunity to talk to them about something, and it needs to be about the gospel. Last week, we talked about how if you talk about anything else... It is godly, godlessness. If you talk about things that hasn't got to do with God, we are called to be a people who will talk about godlessness. Every time I do a funeral, I'm involved in a funeral, I realize how brief life is. And I'm called again to be eager. So could I ask you right now, is this something you can transform into? As we are transforming into the image of Christ in 2016, we want to transform. And what we're doing during this month is transforming from being shamed to be unashamed. Can I ask you to be a people who would be, number one, eager? You see, if I can find some people who are eager to preach the gospel and who are, number two, unashamed of the gospel, I know number three is a given. They will share it. So let's look at number two. Let's look at verse 16. For, in other words, what I've just said, my eagerness to preach the gospel, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, 
For it is the power of God to salvation to all who believe, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. You ask yourself, if you're thinking about this, why would Paul say that he's ashamed? Why would anybody be ashamed? You remember when Christ was being persecuted? Remember how they tried to shame him? They put the thorn wreath on him, a crown on him. They, uh, they beat him. They spat on him. They put a, a purple robe on him. They pretended that he was the king. They were trying to shame him. Well, then I thought about Paul. And if you, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, this whole section over here talks to you about how Paul was persecuted and how they tried to shame him. He says, with far great, this is from verse 23 all the way to verse 29. He says there, far greater laborers, far more imprisonments, counters, beatings, often near death, 40 lashes, less one, three times beaten with rods. I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, frequent journeys, now listen to all the dangers. Dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, my own people, Gentiles in the city, uh, danger in the city, uh, in the wilderness, in the, at sea, uh, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardships, sleepless nights, hunger, thirst, without food, cold, exposed. Apart from that, I suffered anxiety as I thought about my concern for all the churches. Paul, if anybody could have been shamed, it would have been Paul. They beat him down to shame him. Yet he says, I'm unashamed. For I'm unashamed, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. What is the gospel? You could say it's the good news. You could say it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or you could say it's death, burial, resurrection. Let's say it together, folks. What is the gospel? It is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul defined it like that in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. He showed the application of the death, burial, and resurrection in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, when he said, I died with Christ in baptism, I was buried with Christ in baptism, and I resurrected from the baptistry to walk in a new life. So that is the gospel. That is what we talk about. And, and why is it important that you and I know what the gospel is? Why is it essential that we know what the gospel is? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? For it's the power of God, what? For salvation. We need to know what the gospel is because that is what will save. And who is it the power of God for salvation to? Is it forced? Are you pre-selected, predetermined? Or is it to all who believe? See, it's not forced or rammed down anybody's throats. It's to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now what that means to me is it's for all mankind. So let's talk about one of our favorite talking uh, points in this area. How many of you have as your favorite team the Cincinnati Reds? Right, you can talk all about it. We even have Joey today that has a Cincinnati Reds t-shirt or shirt. <laughs> That's really neat. Well, this guy is the Cincinnati Reds' number one fan. That's what it says on his t-shirt. Do you see what's around him? A bunch of empty seats. He's going to come to a game even if no one else shows up. He's going to come to a game even if a tornado is threatening. Because he's the number one fan of the Cincinnati Reds. I wonder what he would do if it was raining and he had to put a big old raincoat over his colors. I don't think he'll be happy. I think he'd want to show the world who he is and what he is and who he supports, right? Because he's eager and he's not ashamed. In the same way, I believe God wants us to show his colors. I believe God wants us to say, I'm his number, he's my number one fan. I believe God wants us to show up whether it's rain or sleet or tornadoes threatening. I believe he wants us to say that we'll always be there because I'm not ashamed. So I'm eager, number one, I'm not ashamed, number two, number three, you find somebody who's eager, you find somebody who's not ashamed, they will share. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith or from faith for faith. In other words, it's, it spreads. It comes to me 
into my soul, and then my faith goes to somebody else. That's what's meant to happen. If you're eager and you're unashamed, then the gospel will spread. Jacob, you see that there, right? It's pretty clear, isn't it? It's, it's, it's something that's spreading. What's not so clear is that, sec, that third word, for in it. What is it? Well, what is verse 15 speaking about? What is verse 16 talking about? So what must verse 17 be talking about? It's the gospel. For in it, in other words, in the gospel, the righteousness of God. In other words, being in a right standing with God is revealed. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, it says, For the righteous shall walk by faith. I think that's probably the most important thing that we need to reflect on here. But as we go through it, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed, from faithful faith it spreads. As it is written is a perfect tense, it means a completed act, uh, action. This is revealed, it's complete, it's been revealed in you. And then he continues with the perfect tense by saying, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So here is where we oftentimes go, times go wrong. When we spread the gospel, we say, you know, let me tell you what Neville said about the gospel. Or somebody comes and asks you, what must I do to be saved? And you tell them. What you should do is realize that the righteous walk in faith, right? Do the righteous walk in opinions? Do the righteous walk in the sermons of the preacher? Or do the righteous walk in faith? The righteous walk in faith. Well, how does faith come? Now, in Romans chapter 1, you turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and it says, For faith comes by hearing, and hearing the words of Neville. No? Okay. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing the words of Christ. The words of Christ. You see, if you open it, and you read it, you get it right. And faith spreads from faith to faith. But it always goes back to God. And it comes to me, and somebody asks me, and I take it back to God, and it comes back, and I give them that. And then their faith is not in me, but their faith is in God. It's not in my opinion. It's not in my emotions. It's not in some doctrinal book I pick up. It's only in the Word of God. And it's as Jesus got it from the Father, He reveals it and gives it back to us. For many Cincinnati Reds baseball fans, uh, the Reds is like a near religion for them. And they will talk about it even in their workplace. Even if it means possibly getting fired. So Chris, go to the next slide and let's, let's see how that works. I mean, we've talked about things, we've debated about things, haven't we? And, and it keeps going around and it's, we get so excited and so fervent about it. And we share it over and over. We share the statistics of the games. We talk about the game before the game. And then we talk about the game during the game. Then we talk about the game after the game. I mean, it's all about, it's all about the game. And we share it. There's very few people here who are not right on top of something. I mentioned uh, Hoover's name the other day, and I didn't realize that he was in the bad books until I went and checked up on it, because I, I got enough nods from people saying, hmm. <laughs> so I went to look why I got all those nods, and I found out. Folks, our, our topic of interest can't be divided. It can't be what is happening politically in this country today. It cannot be the Cincinnati Reds. That can come afterwards, or you can use that as a, as a bridge to start talking. I would not advise that, because when you, st for instance, in politics, you get, some politi you get some people in different parts of our country who believe if you're a Republican, you're going straight to hell, or who believe if you're a Democrat, you're going straight to hell. And all that does is negate your ability to spread the gospel. And that's, all what's, that's the only thing that's important. You won't know which political party was in power in this country when you're in the next world. So don't worry about it. Don't focus on it. I don't know what our focus will be next year. Maybe it'll be back to euthanasia or back to abortion. And all of these have religious ties and they're all designed to get you pulled in. But you only have so much time. And you need to talk to people about the gospel. It's the one thing that can save all mankind. And it is so powerful. So, Christians, as you transform, let me ask you this. Are you eager to communicate the gospel? 
Are you unashamed of the gospel? And are you willing to share the gospel? Now, folks, you do that. We do that. Guess what we'll do to our world? We can share bulletin articles. We can share sermons. We can share, we can invite people to church. All of these things are really powerful as you spread the gospel. I don't know if you're aware that our lessons get streamed through YouTube. Every single lesson from this building goes out via YouTube. And not only does it go out via YouTube, it also gets podcast live. Did you know that? And, and th these things are all happening, and it's so easy for us to spread these ideas of the gospel. There have been some powerful sermons that Brian has preached the last few times. Have you, have you spread that news? Have you let people know about this? We need to be a people who are spreading the gospel. A little girl, this is a true story, she's nine years old and she lost her mother. And so she goes to her neighbor and she says this to her neighbor. Her neighbor's name is Ann Cetus. And this is what Ann Cetus writes. My neighbor Jasmine, age nine, was sitting on the front porch with me one summer evening. Out of the blue, she started talking about her bad choices and how she needed God's forgiveness. This lady went and told her her opinion of what this little girl should do. And then she just told the girl, well, now you're saved. And then this is what happened. Questions about heaven started pouring out of her. Are the streets really gold? Will my mom be there? What if she isn't? Will I have a bed or will I sleep on a cloud? What will I eat? And Cedar says, I assured her that heaven would be a perfect home and that she would be with Jesus, who would give her everything she needed. She replied with excitement, well, then let's go right now. Wouldn't you have loved to have been that neighbor? Wouldn't you have loved the opportunity for somebody to ask you about how do I, what do I do now? How can I become a Christian? And then kept your mouth shut and said, let's open the Bible and let's read what God says and shared with her the gospel. Folks, I don't know what happens to that little girl. I don't know what happens to her mother. But what I do know is if you do what they did 2,000 years ago, you become what they became. Not part of a denomination. Not part of a, a summer church of Christ that's somewhere here in this world. You become part of the body of Christ and God himself as you to the church. Just like that day, 3,000 people were baptized. It's all about the gospel. It's not about territory. It's not about pride. It's about spreading the gospel and not worrying who gets the credit or, 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 or trying to figure out who's in heaven and who's not in heaven, but letting God be the judge of all of that. Folks, I want to take as many people along with me as I possibly can, and I know you also want to. And so we need to be this kind of a church. We must transform today to be unashamed, eagerly unashamed, spreading the gospel. If you want to change your life today, either by the prayers of, this, of the elders of this church or by coming forward to be baptized, whatever your need is, please come forward right now as together we stand and sing.